In this series, we're going to explore the new macros in Swift 5.9 and replace some repetitive code. In this first part, we're just going to give an example of when we might want to use a macro. We'll start to shape the macro and then begin to create it. We won't implement it this time. We'll leave that for next time. You can review the More Async Streams video if you'd like to see the example, but the specifics aren't really that important. Our goal is to replace boilerplate code with something that's easy. So before we start replacing the boilerplate, let's add to it. Async streams make stream method returns an async stream, which we've called numbers here, and a continuation that we've called numbers continuation. We need numbers continuation internally, but we don't need to expose it to anyone else. And there's no way to say numbers is public, but numbers continuation is private. So to start, let's make them both private. And I'll rename numbers underscore numbers and add in this public computed property, which is an async stream of ints, which just vends underscore numbers. Similarly, I'll declare numbers2 and numbers continuation2 to also be private, change numbers2 to underscore numbers2, and create a public computed property numbers2, which vends underscore numbers2. There's a lot of similarities between the two. In both cases, we specify the type that's being vended. It's an int, which we later use in makeStream as int.self and the name of the computed property numbers appears elsewhere as a template, underscore numbers and numbers continuation. Unfortunately, I didn't quite follow the pattern here and I've got numbers two and underscore numbers two, but there's this numbers continuation two. To have a consistent pattern, let's rename numbers continuation two to numbers two continuation and make the corresponding change to next number. And now we've got a pattern. We've got a template that we can use for our macro. If we choose a name, then we use underscore name and name continuation. And if we choose a type, then we see type in the generic and type.self inside of MakeStream. Now, there are various types of macros to choose from, but in our case, our macro is going to add the computed and the stored properties, and so we need to use a member macro. I want to point out that in my first attempt, I used a different sort of macro, and I got the exact code that I wanted, but it didn't make sense to the compiler. So here's how we want to call this macro. If I've got a class, I want to decorate it with this macro at create async stream. And as the first parameter with the label of, I want to specify the type. And in the second parameter with label named, I want to specify the name. My goal is that it should expand to this. Inside of my class, I add a computed property name, which is an async stream of type, which returns underscore name. And I also get the stored property, private let underscore name name continuation, which equals the result of async stream make stream of whatever my type is. That will allow us to simplify all of this repeated code to just two uses of the macro like this. Two invocations of the create async stream macro applied to the support. So again, this is a member macro. The create async stream macro adds members to the class that we're decorating. It adds the computed property and the stored property. Macros live inside of packages, so let's create our macro package. In Xcode, create a new package and choose the Swift macro template. And once we've named it create async stream, we get this generated. There's the package.swift file and then several sources that we'll walk through in this and the following videos. To begin with, let's look at create async stream.swift. This is where the macro is declared. You'll see a comment at the top that we've adapted to our own needs. It says that the macro adds a public async stream of a given type and a private continuation to a class or struct. And it shows you that this is how the macro is called. This is an example. In this case, I've used int.self for the type and numbers for the string. And we've also shown what this should expand to. Inside of the class, we should get the computed property numbers and the stored property, the tuple, underscore numbers, numbers continuation. So now let's declare our member macro. It is attached, its type is member. And because the name of the properties that we're adding are somewhat arbitrary, that depend on whatever string the user enters, we have to note that the names are arbitrary. Secondly, we declared that the name of the macro is create async stream and it's generic in some type T. And that type T can be inferred from the of from that first argument t.type is int.self in our case, and the second parameter has the label named and it takes a string, in our case numbers. This is an external macro, 
and it lives in the module create async stream macros, which is created by this package. And the type of the macro is create async stream macro. Next, interestingly enough, the template provides us with main, which uses our macro in some code. So we're going to decorate a class, say example, and we decorate it with our macro. So we need to import create async stream. And now let's use the actual macro at create async stream of int.self comma named numbers. Now we haven't implemented it yet, but it would be nice if we added something that used that implementation. So in this example, I've added a method named something which uses the numbers continuation to yield an int into the stream. This tests that numbers continuation is provided by the macro and it's gotten the name from our string that we entered numbers and it shows our async streams type is an int because that's what we've yielded. So once we've implemented our macro, this code should build fine. Now we haven't implemented the macro yet, but let's assume for a moment we have and show you what you'll see in this main file. If I control click on create async stream, one of the choices is to expand the macro and there we see it. That's the code we expected to be created by the macro. And that's why something can use numbers continuation and know that it yields an int. We still aren't implementing our macro, but another thing given to us by the template is a unit test for it. And there's a new assert like XCT assert equals and so on. It's assert macro expansion. And what you provide is here's the macro and here's what I expect it to be expanded into. As we implement the macro, we'll find that spacing matters. And I had to return to this code and change the spacing, the indentation and so on, so that this test would pass. That was the only thing keeping it from passing at that point. It was the fact that my spaces were two spaces instead of four. The final parameter for assert macro expansion is you have to say what macros we're using. And in this case, my dictionary contains one entry with key create async stream and value create async stream macro dot self. So the only thing that's left is create async macros and that's our implementation. And that will be our topic next time.